Um, excellent. So that's a little bit about metrics. Um, so at Patreon Power, we do use a we do use a type of kind of a CRM platform um, uh, called uh, Buzzstream. And uh, we we really enjoy Buzzstream, and it's something that through a long journey of other trying other things out, other platforms out, we have uh, we eventually settled on Buzzstream, and we really enjoy it, and it's really kind of answers a lot of our um, uh, a lot of our needs. Um, but Page and Power didn't start that way. Um, I don't know, Kyle. Uh, Kyle, maybe tell us a little bit of take us back in time to uh, to pre Buzzstream uh, like days. <laughs> long, long time ago in internet years, which is like five years ago, um, we, we were kind of figuring it all out. We just use Google Sheets because it's free, and you know, it's available to everyone. You can share it with people. Multiple people can edit within a doc. You can control who edited it. But basically what we had done is created tabs for the different types of outreaches, the different stages of outreaches, and you just had everyone kind of like recording what they did and leaving notes, moving things to different tabs, moving things to different sections. Uh, it works great on a small scale because it's easy to share. It's free. Um, anyone can get in and use it pretty naturally. What ended up happening is as we grew, it just had so many people in it. Or if you have long-term projects, they get so much data in it that it just, like, bogs down the document. Um, and, like, it, when you have that many people working out of one doc, things get moved and deleted that you didn't want deleted. <laughs> and then you, you're kind of lost. So it, it's really, like, when you're trying to decide, like, do I need, like, a tool like BuzzStream, you have to kind of think about the scope and what's in your budget, things like that. Uh, Bus seems great for like a bigger agency like we are that has a lot of multiple projects you're working on, but that doesn't mean it wouldn't be good necessarily good for a smaller company because it is very like intuitive and it helps keep track of stuff better than Google Sheets can. But it's not like Google Sheets is an impossible obstacle to to get over if you're on the smaller end of. of SEO only building. Yeah, exactly. Um, honestly, we fared quite well uh, with Google Sheets um, for about as long as it, for about as long as possible until you know. Until luckily, it's a good problem to have is that our business scaled up so much uh, to the point where we needed kind of more of a centralized system rather than discrete you know Google Sheets that um, you know that were kind of more siloed. Um, so it kind of de depends on the size of the business, but for but we we've definitely had success with both. Um, what about conversion rates? So this is really kind of a hot topic here, uh, you know, kind of in, in the in the SEO link building community. Um, conversion rates, um, everybody's kind of chasing that magic number, kind of chasing high conversion rates. Um, what is what does that kind of bear for you guys? What is uh, yeah? What what are your thoughts on that? Well, for me, um, being able to track, especially how many people will actually answer my emails. And then how many of those people that actually respond to me can I can get into, to transform into a link for my client um, is incredibly important. Um, that way I know what type of pitches to write and what's working, uh, what style of pitches I need to be writing and, and how do you approach different sites. That way I can get those links. Um, for me, uh, in my personal efforts, I've noticed that about half of my outreach I get a reply to if I am writing good pitches. And then um, if I get a response, then 90% of those, of that 50, will result in getting a link because I'm talking to somebody and I can, I can work with them instead of just getting a hard no answer. So that's a, uh, with doing a little, you know, back of the napkin math here, so if that's 90% of 50%, that's a, that's a, a pretty good conversion rate. That's kind of north of 40, right? Not quite mm -hmm. 50 and uh, so that's that's a lot higher than than the industry average of about you know ten to twelve percent. Um, what's what's your secret? What uh, what what goes what goes into that? <laughs> tell tell us. <laughs> um, well, a big part of it is I try to tailor every single because uh, once again I'm I'm writing content for for different sites. I pit, I tailor my pitch and my email especially to the site that I want to get a link onto. I don't just send a, a broad template email. I don't. I don't try to spam them with the same ideas as everybody else. I try to find what they want to do with their site. I write an article that can help them accomplish that, and I come to them saying, "Hey, I'm a writer. I have this really good content idea that your site can benefit from." 
and then I, I expect them to get back to me because I'm providing them with a good idea um, and I don't say, oh, I, will you, I, I look forward to hearing from you and please get back with me. I say, this is a good idea for your site. Um, let's talk, basically. So, it, so one of the things that, that I'm hearing is that a lot of the success is contributed to understanding the site that you are kind of are reaching to, looking at it, looking at it as part of like the mosaic of it, that that particular community. I know you write a lot of you know kind of marketing type blogs, uh, understanding how that site fits in within that within that sphere, um, and and doing some research on the site itself uh, before even our reaching. Um, you know, it seems like that. It seems like custom fitting, tailor fitting an email and approach, um, knowing what you're knowing what you're going into seems to have a really good effect on your conversion rates um, and I think that's that's definitely something that we can all uh, we can all kind of uh, uh, learn from as well um, Kyle anything to kind of uh... I mean as someone that does like a slightly different type of link building than like content creation I, I have a much lower conversion rate um, and that's just some of the obstacles you're gonna face when doing much more of like a resource oriented and taking like a resource and trying to share it mm -hmm. is um, that you got to find that value add which is probably really key into like creating a conversion like having a successful conversion and that's something where like you know when you, you're guest blogging or you're creating a piece of content just specifically for that site that's unique to that site it has much more of value than like a guide or something that's going to be shared out across the same across everyone. But I think what Colin said earlier is just to keep in mind when you outreach people, like what their site is about and what their needs are, so you can add that value to your outreach and hopefully get that conversion or at least get a response. Because even like honestly, uh, no response is better than no like. Getting a response where someone says no is better than no response. That's, that sounds a little weird, but um, just because then you're not wasting your time doing follow-ups and stuff like that. Well, here's what the other thing too is like, and this kind of talks to the you know kind of patron powers message of um, you know kind of taking that and kind of crafting it. Um, you know, kind of by hand in a sense. Um, you know, by real people is that um, website owners. No, you you get to be very savvy um, if you if you run an inbox for a website. You get to be very savvy, and you know the difference between a bot, someone that just found your email through buying a list illegally or illicitly or other other means, and and somebody that actually a human behind the words and who has actually took the time to research your site and approach you specifically um, as opposed to literally tens of thousands of people at the same time. Um, so I think that, that seems to make all the difference in the world, um, which kind of dovetails nicely with this next topic. Um, talk about hot button issues here. Let's talk templates. So I know that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of kind of uh, uh, writing both ways, kind of talking about pro and, pro and against templates different approaches um let's uh let's hear your take on templates let's uh, let's start with kyle um i i guess i preface this i use templates but i allow myself like breathing room for like customizable fields so like when i'm pitching a resource or just the the product or whatever i'm pitching out to a site i'll create a template that has like um like really like a good description of what the um, what the product is or what the guide is about or what the tool, tool is another good one to pitch out on resource lists and what it's about. And that's going to always probably say the same as well as like a little info about who I am and the company I work for. But I always like to cater it with like, or uh, not cater, customize it with small things like little things like what, you know, making sure you use like good morning in the morning good afternoon in the afternoon and stuff like that that lets you know that you're at least like human and aware of the time if you know a name like if you're reaching out to a specific person using their name either in the subject line or like hello john or hello sally or you know, something like that i always like to include like the actual page i want to get linked on switch up um, the link that i want like if it's a different link so it's like i use templates but i 
create like I leave little spots for like customizable fields essentially that I can uh, you know add names and little little touches that kind of show that you're human like but for me the product that I'm pitching at least when I'm working on a certain client usually isn't going to change so templates can help me get through that outreach a lot quicker if I'm not typing the same spiel about the product over and over and over um, so I use templates and I just usually rotate in names time of the day uh, little things about the site and stuff like that so kind of a kind of a template but room to breathe uh, it's not just you know you know square peg round hole one size fits all um, so so it seems like that's that's kind of um, uh, kind of a good kind of middle ground uh, compromise uh, Ben what are your thoughts um, for the writing side the content side I never use templates I because I craft every single email to the site's particulars um, a template would just force me to be deleting things constantly um, from the template I do follow a pattern in my emails where if I, of course, if I can find a name, I address them by name. I say good morning, good afternoon, all that same stuff. But um, from there, then I, sim I follow the my pattern of I start out with my pitch. And then from there, I, I tell them what type of value my, my content would have on their site, what it would bring to their audience and to their business. And then from there, then I introduce myself as a writer. And I, I say, this is why I'm qualified to write for your site. And then I basically say, uh, let's talk. And then I end it there and I keep them really short. And a template for me would just force me to be too rigid in my approach. I like to have 100% flexibility in my emails. Mm. So it sounds, like, uh, it sounds like templates have a time and a place. Um, especially if you're kind of doing more of a scale, you know that because like if I, so if my client is, is a wedding photographer, right. And I do my site prospecting, listen to last week's uh, webinar about site prospecting. Um, and if I do my site prospecting, I have a list of 200 local or statewide or regional, um, wedding venues that all have a resource page that recommend that have their recommended photographers for that region right and so that's the link i want to get i want to get my client uh on the those recommended photographers for those wedding sites so i don't necessarily it's not necessarily going to bump my conversion rates super super high if i just hand if i forget the last email i sent start from scratch, write a whole new one asking for the same basically type of link like, hey, there's a great, this is a great photographer in this region. Um, we think he belongs in your resource page. Uh, he has a great proven track record of uh, excellent photography and, and getting along with the uh, guests at the wedding, things like that. He's not tipping over the wedding cake. Uh, and, and so that would be a perfect place for a template. Because you want to reach out to those 200 different places you're doing, you're asking for that, you're asking to be included on their resource list that they have in those sites. Um, but in, in other situations, a template, a template definitely isn't the best. So, a very interesting conversation. We could literally do a whole webinar on on uh, on on templates and whatnot. But it seems like customization is the key. Um, so, one of the things I wanted to look at that's that that people actually often forget about or kind of don't really talk about when uh, when we're talking about outreach, and that's finding contact info, um, right? So, um, you found the site, and that's that's part of the battle, and finding the right site for you, and the metrics look good, and everything you know, everything works. There's good traffic that's showing good user experience. Um, so, finding the right Finding the right contact and for the right person to contact, um, and so this is very this this is a difficult this is a difficult uh, uh, thing to traverse really. Um, so we had an example here um, uh, here that I wanted Ben to kind of maybe walk us through a little bit. Uh, so Ben, here's this here's this uh, this site here. So Ben, if you want to outreach to them and maybe talk about doing some content for them, providing some content, where do you start? What do you what's what's your process? So the first thing first is I try to analyze what type of site it is and what the purpose of the site is. So it's a site I've, uh, you, you can look it over. It's clear that they're, they have something to do with social media. Um, they have things about how, uh, how school are using Pinterest to, to educate. They or how to use social media in marketing. So they're very clearly focused on social media in their site. It's even as one of their top things along with mobile and business. Um, from there, I might click into a couple articles 
and kind of read what type of things are coming from both from their own writers and what they've accepted from guest posters and other writers in the past. And then from there, then I would try to find their contact information of the best type of places. Of course, there are the About Us pages. They have a Contact Us page um, to start with. Um, so this one, they just have a, a contact form and an email. Um, when it comes down to it, I. I'll, I'll usually do both in some time if I don't hear back from them. I might start with the contact form first, and then from there, if I don't hear from them, use the, the actual email. Or they also have a tweet us type of spot, which if I, I would feel comfortable because I do write about, or I do have marketing stuff on my Twitter, I'd, I'd be probably willing to reach out to them on Twitter. Um, and then from there, I would, in my, in, the, in my message, I would write out my pitch that would be all about social media and how it could ha impact a business or it could impact the world and et cetera, et cetera, something that would be perfect for their site that would fit very naturally and then include in that article links to clients that are also associated with social media. Excellent. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, it, it really goes to show like not a single email gets, gets written um, typically, even, you know, resource and writing side before a good amount of research is done into the site um, and to understand the site contextually and to understand, you know, understand kind of what it's doing, where it fits. So, you know, link building, as much as anything else, um, link building is really about um, being a good researcher and being a good knowledge gatherer um, and kind of being able to look at entire industries as a whole and, uh, and being able to kind of see how those sites may interact uh, with those industries. So. Um, Kyle, what about what are your thoughts on uh, on finding contact info? Any best practices you can share with us uh, in that regard? Um, like, what I usually do is just kind of like if I find like a resource page or like uh, one another kind of type of link building I do is like brand mentions. If your brand's big enough to be mentioned, is like start on that page and see if like hey if you want to be listed on here, is there an email I'm supposed to send with a certain topic? Sometimes you'll find that most time no, but Occasionally it's there because they want more resources on the page. Um, if it's like a brand mention, like where your brand's mentioned in an article, I'll usually look for like, you know, who wrote this? Um, do they have an email I can find? Or is there like a web editor or a digital editor for like the publication that can uh, edit this for me and edit a link to your company? Um, and then... I look for those specific ones first that like are specifically asking for that and then I'll usually kind of work my way I guess back up the funnel a little bit to like you know is there a webmaster they they obviously have the keys to the website should I try them find them and then if I can't find that or like a digital editor of some sort mm -hmm. I'll then I'll usually go to like the help or the info type email that's a lot broader and who knows who's actually reading that or if it's going to get read. So you're going to have probably a lower conversion rate when you're kind of shouting into the ether that is like <laughs> an info email. But it's better than nothing. And I, it's not to say you won't get a link, you know, right. e emailing those. You kind of have to work with what, you work, what, what you're given. Um, sometimes even then, if you can't find an email on the website or a contact form, you can check like their Facebook page. Sometimes they'll have emails and Facebook pages like in the uh, info section that aren't, that uh, they don't include on their website and stuff like that. So it's just a more start specific and then work your way to more general email is probably the best tip I can give you when trying to find emails. Um, you can also just site search if you're like getting tired of clicking through the site. If you just like, you know, site colon whatever.com and then throw like contact info and in quotes. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes you can find emails that way. That way you don't have to like dig and dig and dig through levels of pages. Um, it could be argued too that if you have to dig that much to find contact info, they probably don't want to be contacted. <laughs> but right. you, you never know unless you try. It's a good motto to have, I feel, with link building because a lot of times, at least uh, when you're just kind of asking for a link with little to no value add, um, it's just, uh, you know, a lot of like, you know, not succeeding, but you gotta you gotta be persistent and that's how you get links most of the time is just by being persistent. 
That reminds me of an anecdote uh, I know of someone who used the, uh, the who is uh, function for, you know, who is look up for a website and found an email there, which is pretty common. A lot of uh, site owners don't necessarily keep the who is private. Um, and uh, it, but they contacted that for you know for as an outreach for link building, and the person at first was like a little a little bit testy uh, because they're like you know this how did you find this email uh, you know but you're like well it's publicly available it's here you know it's public information it's who is it's part of registering a, a domain uh, on the free and open internet and once they kind of you know, realize that that it was it was a little bit less uh, you know a uh, little bit less tricky, but uh, but yeah, the who, who is use your own risk because not everybody is really aware that their email is out there and open to the public um, through who is lookup. Um, yeah, we talked about we kind of touched on social media using one really great way to contact somebody and to really kind of give them that human element is through a, a direct message. Um, but again, a lot of direct messages are really spammy these days. But just you know, if it's like a direct message and they could look at your Twitter profile or, or Facebook um, and they know that you're kind of a real person in this industry that's interested about marketing or, or whatnot, um, that's usually received uh, received better as well. Okay, so this one was always tough for me. Uh, you know, I started at Patreon Power as uh, you know as doing you know uh, as a writer, basically kind of um, doing you know, pretty much exactly what uh, Ben's doing. This will always trip me up, and it still does to this day, is crafting the perfect subject line. Um, <laughs> I, I would have to, I'd have to get a lot of inspiration and, and help from, you know, crowdsourcing to kind of help with this one. What do you guys, how do you guys tackle subject lines? Um, well, for me, the first thing I always look is that if I'm going to go to a site that allows guest posting and their guidelines, a lot of times they will have a required subject line typically like write for us or writing for the site or something like that. Um, from there, it, again, it depends on the site. But for me, the perfect subject line often is saying, just simply saying writing for your site or I want to write for your site or I have an idea for your site and make it clear that I'm talking to them and it's not like I'm trying to slip by their, their ideas and, and like I'm not sending them the, the title to the article right in the subject line because they might think that I'm just some spam bot sending them an article to try and get them to buy a product. And I, I try to show I'm a human, I'm a writer, I'm write, I want to write for you. Um, Kyle, what do you think? Um, yeah, I, I, I think this is one t I will preface by saying play with it, figure out what works for your niche and for the type of people. Um, I tend to be pretty straightforward with mine with a lot of things like quick question about the name of your website, um, which once again shows that at least you're putting a little thought into actually <laughs> like acknowledging their website has a name and stuff like that. Or even like uh, we talked about like, I'd be like, hi, John, I am like dash or colon. Like I have a quick question about your resource page or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I know some people tend to, uh, depending on the niche, can be a little more lighthearted and jokey with their their, their uh, subject lines, but it's honestly something you need to just kind of like almost do little focus groups on, like try sending X amount of emails with this one, this type of subject line, and try sending them with this amount of subject line and just see what works for you. Um, like some people are really good at like being funny and humorous in, in, within their subject line, and that's a good way to elicit a human response is through humor. Um, but sometimes like, you know, like if you have like a, a more straightforward like a finance resource or even like a medical type resource like it's not necessarily the best thing to get all humorous about so um, I, w I would just say like uh, you can keep it simple and straight to the point because uh, you know like subject lines are going to be truncated at some point mm -hmm. um, if they're too long um, or you know if you have a more lighthearted niche or something or you're just a funny human I guess which maybe I'm not uh, <laughs> Try, try, try some different types of subject lines and just see what you get more responses with. Um, you never know, like, like I said it before, you kind of never know till you try some of these different uh, outreach strategies. Excellent. Um, value add. So that's one thing that's that I think is really important here uh, for us at Page One Power is link building is a lot about value. Link building is about building relationships, um, and part of that part of that kind of initial touch point in that relationship is I'm reaching out to you, you don't know me, um, 
but I've done a little bit of research on your site and I think I have something that can add value to your site. It's kind of that initial conversation, right? Because there, you, you know, honest, in all honesty, like there has to be a reason for them to really kind of want to motivate themselves. Like unless you're outreaching and everyone is Mother Teresa, right? And they're just super biased and just very wonderful person and they and they just respond to every email that they get no matter what 100 percent of the time and <laughs> then which i don't i have not seen evidence of that yet um there has to be kind of a win-win scenario whereas like uh the win is you know the the client that the the business that i'm building links for is a great photographer and they would be a great addition to the site uh because you're you know you have a page dedicated to who are the great wedding photographers in the area and your the site readers the traffic could benefit from uh you know from you adding another really good person to that list um and so there has to be kind of that win-win um so i don't know how do you add value um I know like in the resource side of things, it just, you need to like, if it's just like a product or something, a product or a service, and you don't really have any sort of like tools or anything you can pitch, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, you need to kind of just explain what's unique about your service or product. Like why link mm. to you over the other dudes or people in your field? Um, so it's just, it's, it's, kind of like for me it's just kind of explaining what the company does and why it's beneficial to the readers or viewers of the website that I'm outreaching right for me it's it's I I try to show them that the article that I want to uh, contribute to their site is something they haven't covered yet whether because they simply haven't thought of the idea or if they don't have that expert uh, that, that expertise behind it to be able to cover it. And then I can say, hey, well, I'm an expert in it. I'll write an article for you about it. You know, that, and it's it can be really as simple as that. Um, you know, I think a lot of people that I talk to, like in training calls or, or, or just in, in conversation, um, they talk about, how do I how do I do that value add? How do I you know how do I put myself against you know ahead of the competition? What's my what's a really killer USP? Um, and sometimes it can be really simple as like, hey, I've looked at your site. There's a you have a lot of you have a lot of uh, content on this. I actually think that your readers might also be interested in this, and you haven't really done this before. Um, so something just very simple is maybe a slightly different topic um, can be really add a lot of value to the site. And, and site owners really, you know, it's easy as a site owner, you know, to get entrenched in a single topic, um, and it, it, it really helps them and kind of helps brighten their day if, if they get a new fresh idea um, from someone else. Um, so there's a lot of debate on this almost as much as kind of the template issue um length of uh of your email so do do we benefit from a very short initial email and i'm just, i'm talking specifically about the initial outreach other conversations obviously it dictates contextually but the initial outreach short or long all way in first really quickly i prefer kind of on the shorter side um err on that as much as possible you know you know a really quick a really quick intro, a really quick, hey, I'd really like to write for you uh, because X um, and, you know, and here's some of my past work. Have a great day. I look forward to hearing from you, right? So, uh, you know, fewer, like a little bit longer than the tweet, right? And so very, very quick uh, and kind of short read um, that kind of gets exactly what I want to say across, unlike when I'm speaking verbally, uh, it's, it's pretty much the opposite. So I'll turn the floor over to you guys. I, I know personally, like, I would agree with Colin being, like, short, clear, and concise is, is definitely beneficial. Um, as a webmaster, you're probably expecting, depending on the size of your site, you're going to see a lot of emails, junk, real like you're just going to see a lot of emails and so i would imagine you don't want to spend your your day reading a short novel about why a resource works out for you you just want to kind of get to the point and realize like is this for me or if this isn't for me and not waste your time um when i first started i would make these really long outreaches where i'd be like i like this about your site and this is a company i work for and we do this 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 and be like three paragraphs and uh, I, I really felt like I, I started to get a lot more outreach when I was just more like, 
less smoke and mirrors and more like just like kind of clear and to the point like, hey, you know, I work for this company. This is what we do. I think it'd be good for your readers for X amount of reasons. For me, it really depends um, on the size and the size of the site and the size of the company behind it. Um, if I if I'm sending a pitch to an editor that's probably going to get a thousand other pitches, yeah, it's, I'm going to keep it really really short and just give them a taste of what my article would be about. That way, if they're interested, they'll get back to me. Um, but if it's a small company and the, the the people instead of getting thousands of emails, they might get ten a day, then I'm going to be willing to put a lot more into the pitch and have a lot and flesh it out a lot more. And instead of just having a few sentences, I might have a couple paragraphs about my article and, and the, the value I'd be bringing to them um, that way, because I feel like then they would have time to actually read it and appreciate what I've what I have put into the art into the email and uh, get a better idea of what my article will be on, give me more more room to argue why they should let me write for their site. Uh, yeah, again, it's kind of contextual, but I think one of the one of the important things too is, um, and 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 I see a lot of outreach emails here, you know, uh, you know asking for uh, uh, you know uh, partnerships or things like that for pay, you know, for patron power, and one of the ones that are always really work for me um, is as a receiver of a lot of outreach um, is if somebody the very first paragraph, very first sentence even is they come out with what they want. So it's like if someone's saying like, hey, Patreon Power, I'd love to do a webinar with you guys. Uh, and here's why, here's my company, here's what we do. Instead of like, hey, hey, Patreon Power, you know, we, uh, I, I'm this company and we really love your site and, and, and this is great. And oh, and by the way, we'd like to do a webinar with you. Uh, obviously, I'll, I'll probably respond, you know, obviously I'll respond to both and, and be very grateful for the opportunity and, and, and all that. But the ones that really kind of get me out of the gate is and want to motivate me, you know, kind of motivate me to respond is, is one that's more forward with, hey, I'm writing you because I want to do a, a partner webinar with you or I want to do a guest post on Patreon Power's blog. Um, and those are really kind of, really kind of leap out at me. So just to, as, as someone that gets a lot of those outreach emails, that's a really good um, kind of best practice there. Um, following up. So this is really important because there's actually, you know, there's, there's obviously a lot of kind of, um, you know, with the Can Spam Act, and there's actually legislation kind of talking about um, email contacts and things like that. How do you guys handle? Uh, and we'll start with Ben this time. Uh, how do you kind of handle your following up? You, you've crafted a custom email uh, to the site. It's been maybe let's say two weeks, thirteen, you know, ten to thirteen, fourteen days. Um, haven't heard back. What's uh, you know? What's your follow-up approach, and maybe how many emails do you typically send before you kind of can it and and move on to another site? Um, well, the first follow-up that I send, I yeah, it will be about two weeks later. Um, I always give people the, the the I assume that they just simply forgot about me because I once again I'm saying, hey, I'm bringing a great article to your site, and I just say, oh, I understand. I probably fell through the cracks. Life gets busy. I'm I'm still interested in working with you. Um, and then after that, if I don't hear from them, then I'll wait another two to three weeks, and then I'll send it as a new subject line saying, hey, still haven't heard back from you. Again, here's my pitch. If, it does, if that's not working for you, here's another art article idea. Again, crafted for their site, but going to be on a different topic and be like, is this more kind of what you are looking for? And if not, then let's, I, I'd still love to talk to you. And then after, after that one, then I'll wait a month, and then I'll say, hey, on that third one, I'll say, I'm going to take my article idea to a different site. Uh, if I don't hear back from you, but you you would have first dibs if you get back to me right away, and that way I put I put a timeline on it and say if I don't hear back from you within 24 hours, I'm moving the, I'm moving on. That's really good. Yeah, that's one of the most successful outreachers too that I that I've seen. Um, uh, they they did an answer, something similar. They said, um, uh, "Hey, I'll I'll respond back. I'll email you." within the next week if I don't hear back from you, uh, right, about this one. So they're basically saying, like, you know, you, if you just kind of ignore me, you're, you're, I, you know I'm going to email you again, so maybe just go ahead and just email me, respond back right now, even if it's a no, honestly. Like, to anyone that does receive a lot of outreach out there um, that may be listening, um, you know, a quick no or a quick, like, hey, no, thank you, no, we're not interested at this time, really goes a long way to kind of obviously stopping further communication, but also kind of 
uh, helping you know helping people kind of um, manage their outreach so it doesn't kind of expand too much. Um, Kyle, what are your? Um, I actually follow up about one week apart, and then I do so I'll do the initial email, and then probably three more follow ups. So mm -hmm. like my outreach life of like a site that probably will never get back to me is about a month. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think honestly, follow ups probably the most, at least for the type of link building I do, like the most important thing, because they get, a, I mean, like we said, like people get a lot of requests. So it's really easy to be like, oh, this might be a bot or just it gets buried in the inbox or something like that. So usually about once a week on the dot, I'll send like an email and my, my follow ups are way like really short ones, usually something like along the lines of like, you know, hello. Um, I just want to get touch bases with you and see if you receive the request I sent on June 30th or whatever, you know, mm. whatever a week ago was. And then I, I like to actually include the specific date. That way, if they missed it, they can look at that date or search my email in the inbox and then just like thank them for their time. And then just it's not really till the last one that I'll then generally be like, you know, does anyone try to elicit a little bit of a response with like, you know, clickbaity like title, like, does anyone even check this <laughs> question mark sure. explanation point? No. <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, but I honestly think being like persistent with your follow up, at least on the resource link building side of thing is like the number one most important thing you can do outside of having a good resource, obviously. Um, because it's just easy to forget people. But as long as you like show that you're like, you care, that you really want to be on their site and that you're going to continue to follow up with them. A lot of times uh, you can at least get, like you, like you said, a, even a no response is better because mm -hmm. then you can quit wasting your time. Um, but yeah, like I, I would say just be persistent, not like too persistent. Don't send them one like every day, but I would say once a week, just shoot them. Like once you've done that initial email outreach, like the follow-up can just be quick and easy. Like that's one you can almost go, if you send all your outreaches on the same day, you can almost just go full template on mm -hmm. and just like kind of work your way through your list real quickly. Excellent. Um, negotiating. So this is one that uh, that definitely was was something that I uh, I, I tried to get good at um, as a link builder myself. Um, you know, especially like if if someone says no. Uh, no, I don't think I really don't th think your pitch for your article is a good fit for my site, um, and they're trying, you know, they're trying to kind of, you know, say no, push you away. Usually, I would I would write back and say, hey, thanks for letting, you know, thanks for taking the time to actually read my email and respond to me and think about it. So I, I usually thank them for their time, um, and then I say, well, you mentioned that it might not be a good fit for your site. Well, do you happen to know anybody that owns a site that might want an article like this, or kind of my my type of writing, or my type of, um, you know, my type of niche? And typically, like it's 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 a long shot, but I've had it work out where they're like, oh, actually, I know this guy, I know this gal. She she runs a really great, um, you know, wedding photography site that I think your piece would fit perfectly on, um, you know, something like that. So that no, instead of just kind of pushing that, you know, so it's just saying, okay, well, thanks for your time, you know, goodbye, to really take some time and negotiate and maybe trying to see what other options you have can really, can really um, build a lot of bridges um, and, and kind of help that. What do you, what do you guys think, Ben? Well, if they, for me, if they ever say, no, we don't like the pitch, I always ask them what about the pitch they didn't like. Mm -hmm. Um, so like for an example, I, I, I pitched to a site once about kind of like a general marketing knowledge uh, article and they came back to me saying no and I said okay why not and they said oh because we try to do more tutorial stuff and I'm like okay well that makes sense I didn't I didn't pick that up on your site but I would be happy to write this type of tutorial article for your site and it still be about the same topic just uh, tweak it for them and then they loved it and it worked out really well. Um, the, the, the moment they respond back to you, you've now opened a conversation. And so now it's very unlikely that they're going to shut down a conversation because now they know you're a human and you know they're a human and people don't like to turn people down. And so you can talk and you can kind of work with them to be like, listen, I really want to work with your site. Uh, what can I do and what can I produce for you that will work for you? And you, it, and you keep tweaking with it and working with them 
and it becomes a cooperative effort to get this article up and it's not just you randomly throwing something at them it's mm. they've they've invested time in it now too and they want it to see it succeed not just you wanting it to succeed i know so like if i would say if you get a no like if they don't specifically say like no we don't link to profit sites or no we like what we, you know we're content with where we're at like asking like he he said like asking him why they said no like what about our product or our service or our company makes you say no or like uh one of the kind of things you can do is if it's like a resource list with multiple links is run a link checker and be like um well i know you said no but you also have these dead links like and that doesn't look good in the eyes of Google or even from a user point, like user experience point of view. Like, would you mind replacing uh, one of these that does a similar thing to our company with our company? Like that adds a little more value as a way to like negotiate mm -hmm. um, if you didn't do that right off the bat. Um, uh, on the resource side, a lot of times when you get no, though, it's a pretty flat no. Like mm -hmm. we just aren't interested. Um, but it never hurts to say like, hey, what, like, just out of curiosity, why did you say no? And like, maybe you'll get a response, maybe you won't, but at least you'll know. If they do respond, at least you'll know why. Like maybe like, you know, like, so like, oh, you're too commercial or something for our, our, our audience. Exactly. Um, kind of talk, talking about turning that no into a yes. Um, and, and a lot of times, like, uh, even just responding with a thank you, it has actually converted into a, a a link for me or to a relationship um, like honestly someone sent someone sent uh, you know no no thanks um, have a great day I just responded and I said thank you um, uh, you know thank you for thank you for letting me know and just being honest and like thank you for letting me know I, I appreciate it and like a couple days later they were kind of like you know what you were really polite and and I, I thought that you, you might have just been a bot before so I was just kind of you know telling the bot no um, but actually, since you're a person, I'll give you I'll give you a shot, right? And so, it literally, just that little bit of politeness really went a long way. Yeah, it's just like when you're you're looking for a job and you you send an application out to um, a company, you never hear back from them. <laughs> that's really frustrating. Yeah. Like you hear the company back, that's a real person emailing and saying, "Oh, I loved your resume. You're so cool, but you're not a good fit, or we're, we're not. It's not right for us right now." You're like, "Oh, well, that company's not that bad." But like the company that never responds back is frustrating. And so even if someone sent you a no, still sending that reply back showing, oh, I'm still a person and I still care about you. Yeah. They're just like, oh, wow, I, that's amazing. That doesn't happen in today's online world of people being polite after being said no. Right. It can go a long way for sure. Um, excellent. And then kind of, uh, kind of, uh, kind of nearing the end of our discussion here, um, we do have a hard stop here at, uh, uh, at, uh, was it 3 PM Eastern time. Um, so the, the last, I believe this is the last slide here is talking about building relationships. Um, so this is something that, that I know. So, so at Patreon Power, we have the unique, we're in the unique position to work with a lot of industries and a lot of unique businesses that, that, um, that use our services. And so like the, the wedding photographer example, um, you know, if, if I know that, Hey, I had a good relationship with this wedding photographer blog and they listed some, they listed someone that I know, you know, a business that we're working with in their section here, and maybe a year down the road or six months down the road, I, maybe there's someone else that we're working with. And I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, I could go back, contact that person and see, hey, do you have any, you know, do you have any, uh, do you know anyone in the, in the business, in the industry that there's this really great t cake decorator? Um, that you know that really is does great work and would deserve a link on a list uh, kind of similar to the wedding photographer one and they might say well we don't have one on our site but I do know another a sister site or another site that could get you that link and could get you that listing um, so those relationships are so important not just not just in kind of a, like a business standpoint but even just like kind of a you know kind of building uh, you know kind of building our relationships through the web and kind of keeping that kind of positive uh, you know that kind of positive energy going uh, as well can really kind of reap benefits um, what do you guys think about building relationships that kind of at the core of outreach yeah um... For, for a writer standpoint, it's really great when I can I can build a relationship with people and so like 
and that I, they, they feel comfortable enough with me that they can come back and say, hey, I really liked your article except for this, 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 and maybe one of those things was the link. And so instead of my article going up, but I don't get the link on it, instead I can work with them and they feel comfortable sharing critique with me and I can come back and, and take that critique and improve my, my article and then come back and say, okay, well, here's another article. I've, I linked to a better thing because you said the thing before wasn't working for you. And how, how does it look now? And then um, from there, I can, become, I can become a regular contributor on some pretty big name blogs. And that becomes very valuable when it comes to doing content link building. Because then I can come back to them constantly uh, over time and be like, hey, I have another great idea for you. And they're like, okay, well, I trust you. Mm. You're really good. I might even give you WordPress access to the back end of my site. And you can just put them up when you want. And then I'll, I'll prove them. And it'll be really easy. You don't even need to p pitch to me anymore. And so it gives me that relationship makes it that I can have a long-term place where I can go to do link building. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's just that, that great phrase, you yeah, know, websites don't, don't link to other websites, people link to other people. Um, and so that's really kind of the basis for everything there. Um, so I want to talk about our takeaways here. Takeaway one, add value, right? So, so always think about when you're outreaching to a site, um, what, is the, what is the value that you're going to add um, to that site and, and in building that relationship and that connection. Um, find the right contact. Finding the right contact info and the person to, to, to actually contact and start that relationship um, can be part of the you know uh, half the battle as well. Um, be concise and clear, whether it's in a longer email that maybe has more details and kind of it, it helps to kind of contextualize your uh, your your needs, or a shorter email that is basically a, a quick outline and maybe is like the very tip of the iceberg of that conversation. Um, but just be co concise and clear with with what you need. Um, follow ups are great. In one of my training courses, I, I, I talk about follow ups, and uh, and actually by the numbers. Follow-ups are really effective. So the first or second, you know, typically getting a, like a sales conversion, kind of more in a sales area, but uh, the conversion rates typically for getting a, a sale on the first email is somewhere like 2%, 1% or 2%. Um, but after the second and third email with the follow-up um, and kind of maybe, you know, building that relationship, they know that they know what you, you want or they, they kind of know more about your product or what you're selling the conversion rates go up to as high as like 20 to 30 percent right from that very two three percent up to 20 you know up to about 20 percent without follow-up so the follow-ups really help um as well um and relationships matter relationships matter because um you know this this is a world out there where we are all more connected now than ever right and so someone that owns site a may know someone else that owns site b c and d and they can open a lot of doors for you, um, and so uh, you know. And so, so building those relationships is is a real keystone to kind of successful link building. Uh, we're going to do a quick poll question here as we kind of wrap things up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the poll started. Um, just a quick one: if you want to learn more about what page what, what Page One Power can do for your site, your business, um, just please take a moment here to answer uh, that poll question. While we get that, uh, we'll get that out there. I want to thank everybody today for taking time out of their or out of their July to uh, uh, to listen in and uh, uh, to be with here with us here today. Um, I'm going to try to do at least one or two quick questions. Um, before we kind of get to our hard stop here at uh, the end of the hour. And uh, thank you so much, everybody, for weighing in on the poll as well. So let's just go ahead and pull up the questions tab here for uh, just a moment. I know that we had some really good questions from the audience. And, and if we don't get to your questions on the air, uh, I will get to you. We will get to you off air, offline. Um, so we have a lot of good questions here. And you know what? We might even be able to... Um, uh, uh, do some follow-up, uh, do some outreach there, right? Um, so, okay, um, let's see, a lot of good questions here, so I'm just kind of going through, um, let's see, uh, okay, so so a question from Sean, this is, this is one that's kind of jumping out here, as a small business owner, what elements of content building and outreach should I feel comfortable outsourcing, and which elements should I never outsource? So to kind of, uh, you know, kind of understand what you mean by outsourcing, like honestly, for link building on kind of a smaller scale for a smaller business, I would keep the outreach in-house as much as possible. 
um, unless you mean by outsourcing, maybe like hiring somebody local, you know, maybe hiring somebody uh, that's like a third party business or something like that, maybe that could be, that could be good. But uh, as we kind of talked about today and, and uh, is that our, somebody outreaching takes a lot of research and kind of individual contextualization of the site they're outreaching to. So it's hard to kind of control that and manage that with an outsource. So I would recommend keeping it in-house. What do you guys think? I would say for content building, um, tr again, try to keep that as in-house as possible because you're the expert. Right. Anytime you outsource something to a, a marketer or something like that, you lose that expertise because marketers are kind of a, a jack of all trades. They'll know a little bit about it. Um, if you do outsource, work very closely with them. Um, make sure you can bring that expertise to the table and show them um, this is how it actually is done in the industry instead of them just making assumptions and doing internet research and maybe being off off the, the wagon a little bit. Um, and then if you do outsource the outreach, show them what type of sites you want to do and show them how how you would want them to approach it. Mm -hmm. Give them that guidance. And if not, then you're going to get a lot of links onto sites that maybe you don't want to associate with. Yeah, I mean, it, it's all about scope. Like, if you have it in your scope, I would say you're probably better off uh, if you can learn about it and do it efficiently, doing it in-house because you're the expert on your own product. Um, but, I mean, if, you did, like, if you're not comfortable with, like, the link building aspect of it or you just don't have the time, like, there's definitely companies and, like, us included that can go out there and do it. But, like, it's, it's on... Not necessarily on you, but you need to like set expectations on what your company does and what um, what you want to see, and pass that expertise on to the the company you're working with, so they can also um, become experts in turn. Excellent, and I am very sorry, but we do kind of have to wrap it up uh, then. So we we got such a, a tremendous outpouring of questions here, and I would like to address those. And so what we may even do is do a quick follow up webinar um, very soon, and, and maybe just uh, and maybe just answer those questions uh, on air because a lot of these questions are really applicable to a wide variety of of, of listeners um, here. So we'll try to address that. If not then I will happily address these uh, myself uh, offline uh, by hand. So uh, anyway, thank you so much for that. And we are not, uh, we are just up against a time constraint. And so we, we don't want to, um, we don't want to uh, let those go by um, without addressing those. So thank you so much. Um, so parting thoughts uh, real quick as we kind of wrap it up. Um, so outreach, it takes a lot of research. Try to get to know your audience. What do you guys have a quick parting thought? Uh, just be persistent. Um, like, like Colin said, know your, know your, uh, know your audience, do your research, but also like be persistent. Don't think that just sending one email off into the ether is going to get you a link. Like, you know, follow up and be persistent. Be friendly. People want to be, want, people want to talk to other people. Everybody is a little lonely sometimes <laughs> and just be friendly. I like it. There's uh, not enough friendliness out there sometimes these days. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us on this PageOne Power webinar. This has been another edition of the PageOne Power panel webinar series. We are very happy you could join us today. Recordings will be available on our website and on our YouTube channel shortly after this broadcast along with our past webinars. Keep an eye out for more exciting webinars in the future from PageOne Power. And remember, link unto others as they would link unto you.